Hello and welcome. In this video, I am going to show you how you can add a slick insider to the product page in Shopify. So here is my product page. I haven't done it before, but uh, we will explore it together. And I'm sure it is going to be a lot easy. So let us go to the slick slider. And if you don't know slick, slick is a very nice and free slider. Just search for slick is, uh, NPM. I have done it in another project, but not have I haven't done it in Shopify. So here is a slick carousel, and there is another one called slick only. Slick only is a package, uh, npm package, but it is not the slider. So do not go to a slick only. So slick carousel is the one we want, and this is the only one. So this is the correct one. Maybe there are some other one, but here is how you can install it. Since we have set up all our development environment, so I will come to my code here, and I will just close everything. So we know if we are starting fresh. I will press con uh, control tilde to open the PowerShell and from here I'll clean up everything and run my npm command to install carousel or slick carousel for myself you know we did the uh, laravel mix in the previous videos like in the first or second videos of development I don't know I'm not sure about that that's why we have npm and we can all, all you have to do is just you can come to the app.js and include it here we have already included the jquery and popper.js and stuff like that and if you have question about why your jquery is not anywhere else this video will fix that for you so just watch until the end so it is going to install your npm and it will take a few seconds so i will pause the video so it is done now i will clear everything again and as i said i said we are going to use vue.js but we have not touched the vue.js yet we will come to that point also so if i come to the product page we will touch the how to add using Ajax and how you can use Minicart. We will touch on that point also, but for now we have UJS and everything is set up. Now, how you are going to structure your file? In the JS directory, we have app here. And how about other stuff like how you can add the JavaScript? So I will show you in this video how you can structure them properly. So if your team is going to be large, it should not mix your file or any other developer is going to work on your team. They have to understand what you have done and how everything is going to work. So in the script directory here, I can add just a file here where we are going to add our slider in the product page. Give it a proper name of product.js. So every developer know that this script written in this file is going to be a related to product.js since we are using laravel mix to combine all of this file and convert it to the app.js at the end i don't worry about how many file or js file i am going to create because finally we are going to have one compressed file for js and css so that's easy for me and here i am going to use uh, my <coughs> color cursor slider so let's come to the documentation here and here is how they are going to say you can use data slick and they are going to say data attribute is easy you can use it but it's still you need to call it using element that is slick so we are going to use it how and i'm going to show you how first of all in here you have to import it how you are going to import it those stuff is not mentioned in this documentation here so i'm sure they haven't so here is how you can import it so like anything else that you have imported here you can import slick the same way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say import slick carousel this is the most basic example that you can do but here is another way of importing so you have to understand this one also you can say let slick which is just a variable equal to then you can use the the word require and then inside the require just write your carousel and now you will have access to the slick also the other way was the that you can see the import is this is the webpack way of doing it and the other way is like i don't know it is typescript or common script something like that so this is also going to work for you so you have access to this link in your file now now how you are going to use this one as i said they are going to give you a clear example of how you are going to use it so first of all you must have it a slick slider here and then you can select your element and apply it if you scroll down a little bit of some of the example here is how you can do this one they have also responsive stuff so i will come here and i will copy this code all of them from here to here let's check it out how it is going to be run so you will paste your code here but for now i will close the console this is your selector it is going to use jquery so you have to import jquery also here right i'm not going to do that one since we import jquery here you should be able to access it here but it is not 
as easy as you just write it down here. How is the easy part? You are going to import it and assign it to the window variable. Then you will have access to the jQuery or dollar sign here. That way, anywhere in your file, you will have access to jQuery. So let's try it. For now, it is a slick or a slider. I am going to call it product slider. The selector is a class, but it does not exist yet. Infinite is false. This is the normal or basic example here. For now, we are going to modify it, of course. So how we are going to import it in another way, the jQuery, so that you can access it anywhere. So here is how you can do this one. For example, uh, this is the original way of we importing jQuery and everything was working fine. Again, you can say import jQuery and then you can assign, say equal to require and then jQuery. This is a simple way of doing it. Now how you can assign it to window variable, you can say window dot jQuery equal to jQuery and still if you are going to assign it to a uh, the dollar sign also you can see equal to dollar sign equal to jQuery this is also going to work now you will have access to dollar sign jQuery anywhere in your page so let's give it a try I haven't done it before so for now we don't need the uh, above one and I'm going to run my comment here to watch for the changes that we have written so it was npm run watch so it will watch for any javascript changes in the source directory for us if you haven't watched the previous videos make sure you watch them and how we set up this one see it is watching for all those changes and it will compile them down to the app.js here in this directory for now we will save this file and let's see how it is going to compile it so the compilation is done and we got no error for now here have the product here you have to include it in your app.js so you can use it how you can Im include it just use import and write the same file that directly you have product here if you save it now let's see if you get any error nope you don't get any error it means everything is working fine if you save it everything is working fine I will open another terminal here or you can add using the same window I will kill here and use team watch to watch for any changes and it should upload team watch is going to watch for the liquid file also it is not only for the source directly it is not watching for the source directory actually it is not watching for this one it will watch for all this file excluding of uh, node module and source directory so if any other changes comes like in the asset directory it will effect on that so if i save it again and it is going to compile my file down again and it should reflect those changes for now we didn't bring any changes but let's see how it is going to effect now see it is going to process because the other terminal is watching here it compiled down for any changes let's see if it is going to upload yeah manifest js it didn't upload the javascript because if you do not bring the changes through the javascript it's not going to compile the javascript so if it doesn't compile it doesn't upload this time if i check out for this one it did compile the css and app.js so i'll bring it back so make sure if you bring a space as extra and save it, it is not going to work unless you are going to bring some big changes. For now, if I come to my product page and let's refresh it and see how it is going to affect it here. I will open the inspect element also to see if we are getting any error. Obviously, we are going to get an error because currently we do not have dollar sign is undefined. That's fine. Let's see how you can fix it. As I said, like we cannot access dollar sign it should be also assigned to the window dot dollar sign so if you assign it here and let's wait for this one it's going to take a few seconds to upload this one so it so the upload is done now if i come to the my product page and refresh it let's see if we are getting the same error i'm going to debug it step by step for you so that you should understand now referencing dollar sign is not defined again you are getting the same error and if you click on that it is going to be in the product page here sometimes it happens like this like you wanna access it here but you don't have it so let's see how you can fix this one if i come here even if you give it a hard reload let's say if it can fix it because sometimes it cache your file nope you are still getting the same error so let's fix it. so if i come to my editor here you know we have imported the product remember when you're importing a file it is a webpack way of doing it means you have to export it in this file for example if you are here you have to export something to do the import it 
but if you want to import a JavaScript file which is regular you are going to use the require one so as I showed you in the above example you are going to require something for now we are going to require the product so you can say product.js here and then that's it if you save it let's come to the browser we have here currently we have this error so let's see if it is going to upload it so it will compile and it will upload it yeah and now it is uploading so the upload is done now if i come to my browser refresh the page now it should remove the error for you no nope. still you are getting the same error it, this one if you click it is somewhere else it is here in the app.js so make sure you are going to say this win this should be window oops window that dollar sign uh like this so this time it should work just fine because we didn't assign it to the window variable now anywhere in your page you will have access to the jquery and dollar sign not only your page anywhere in the JavaScript file if you create a product.js card.js or collection.js you have access to the jquery so that's easy for this one now it should fix this issue how the sliders that you have here this is the class so where is that slider so i will come to my page here before i refresh the page so it is uploading my file so i'm not going to wait for that one this is our product image if you check out this is the column the first image then it has some script and this it has some other images so if i come down here this is the second image they are not in the proper uh, order here so that's why i will do some cleanup for this one and because i want to remove this one because if you want to add the slider first of all it must have a container a container with the child then the child will become the slider so i'll clean up the code and i will come back so here we go i have customized it behind the scene here is the product slider class and this is how you can loop through this one if product size is greater than let's say zero it means we have a product then display more of them here it will loop through them and it will display them and in the my js direct uh, js file also i said that the slideshow a slide to show you should be one and it is also going to be uh, on an another breakpoint we will talk more about this leak more in the next vid videos but for now this is all we have so if i come to my product and refresh my page here everything should look fine here but it does not have any designing then the slider should be fine here this is the next and this is the previous but it doesn't look good right because it shows the product in one it should show one by one so that is what i will do behind the scene and i'll show you the result in the next video so i hope it has been informative if you have any question feel free to ask below the video or check out the code which is in the video description in github i will upload it thank you for watching